Hello everyone, it's an honour to welcome you to this dialogue in our series Elementae. My name is Dominic McCarthy and together with Ludmila Pral, a part of the Australia LATAM Emerging Leaders Dialogue. Our organisation seeks to strengthen international cooperation and understanding by engaging young leaders across the two regions. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, our group has been looking for new ways to interact online and foster increased engagement. Hence, we launched the El Hermente series, along with other initiatives to continue the conversation in Australia and Latin America and to collaborate and provide new opportunities. Today, we're pleased to welcome our special guest, Greg Wallace. Greg is our Australia's Senior Trade Commissioner and Consul General based in Sao Paulo. He manages Australia's trade, education and investment links with Brazil, leads Australia's team and teams in Argentina and has consular responsibility for the welfare of Australians in the state of Sao Paulo. This is Greg's second diplomatic posting to Brazil following an earlier appointment from 2008-2012. Previously, Greg was Australia's Senior Trade Commissioner in Bangkok, managing a team of 18 staff that built on Australia's strong links with talent in education, food, manufacturing and bilateral investment. Greg is a strong advocate for growing productive foreign direct investment from Brazil and Argentina, particularly in the agribusiness sector, and his teams in these countries have delivered a number of investment outcomes for Australia. Prior to joining Austrade, Greg had a diverse 14-year private sector background in global business management with executive positions in technology companies, including Philips Electronics and Coden. These roles were based in Australia, Canada, the US and Brazil. Greg also holds a Bachelor of Arts from the University of Adelaide and postgraduate business qualifications from Macquarie University. He speaks Portuguese and Spanish with fluency. Welcome, Greg, and thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to share your insights with us today. Thanks, um, Dominic and Ludmilla. It's great to have this opportunity, and I really appreciate um, this chance to talk about a place of the world that's uh, pretty dear to my heart, Brazil and Argentina. Thanks, Greg. Greg, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? What is your connection to the Latin region, and how did you end up working in Brazil? Okay, well, the, probably the first thing I should um, clarify, um, Dominic, is that I'm not uh, not really an emergente. I'm more like a, a viejo or a velino because I've been around the block a fair while. <laughs> so I'm in, a, I'm in a different age bracket to you guys. But um, to some extent, I, th I think my engagement with Latin America was um, accidental. Um, like a lot of Australians, I took a year off um, af uh, you know, after starting at university. Um, and wanted to travel the world. I actually travelled to North America, but while I was there, I met a lot of people that had been in Latin America and, and they really told such wonderful stories about their experiences in Latin America that I thought, that's the place I want to go next. And so I did that for the next holiday. I, instead of going to North America, I went to Latin America um, and that really piqued my interest. So when I went back to Australia, um, I went back to university, I made Spanish my major, um, I kept traveling to the region, particularly to particularly to Mexico and Brazil, the countries I traveled the most. And um, eventually I, I got a position after some other work that I'd done. I got a position with Philips Electronics. I moved from Adelaide to Sydney. And that position gave me an exposure to uh, Latin America in a business sense because we had some technologies in our division there that were being used around the world, including in Latin America. And um, eventually I, I moved with the company to Philips. So I became part of the Philips Store Brazil organization back in the 1990s. And so, um, you know, fast forward a few years, did some other roles in, in Canada and the US, and eventually had the opportunity to uh, join Austrade in this role, first of all in 2008. And then, as you said, I went to Bangkok and now I'm back in this position for the second time. So, I consider myself really fortunate, um, a bit of a long and accidental journey, but for many, many years I've, I've been very, very passionate and interested and, um, you know, concerned about what happens in Latin America and, and to be in Brazil to able to observe that firsthand has been, has been a, real, um, a real experience and you know, a, a wonderful time for me. Thanks, Greg. Really Thank great to hear much. about your background. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, well, so for the second question, uh, to what extent has the pandemic affected the demand for goods and services in Brazil and Argentina from Australian exporters? What are the prospects uh, in the wake of a post-pandemic global economy and the main challenges ahead? I think I think that the the impact has not been so severe on goods. I mean, there there has been some impact because, of course, the pandemic has made has made the Uh, logistics, freight and logistics for transportation of goods to anywhere in the world difficult and particularly um, for, for somewhere as far away as Latin America. So that's probably, well, that certainly had an impact upon, upon some exporters. Um, uh, just to finish on the goods, I, th I think the biggest challenge, in fact, is, is not so much the pandemic. It's the bigger challenge of, of, you know, the recognition of Latin America as a market of interest for Australian companies and exporters. So You know the the relevance of this market compared to places closer to home is always is always has been and probably always will be a challenge for us working in the region. So that that's the bigger picture um, for for goods for services. There certainly has been a big impact. I mean, firstly, tourism obviously has suffered globally um, and to and from Latin America in a, in a huge way. It's almost zero, of course, now. And the other big services industry that that is very important for Australia from Latin America is inbound students. And so um, particularly from Brazil and Colombia, um, Colombia now represents the fifth biggest and Brazil the sixth biggest source of students from Latin America to Australia. So, you know, that, that's been a huge impact because, you know, there's, you know, the, the numbers of students travelling to, to Australia to study has slowed to, you know, almost zero again during the pandemic. And... Will that recover is, the, is, is a very good question. I'm optimistic that it will, but I think it will take some time. You know, I think that the, the macro reasons about why, Latin, why Australia is uh, attractive to people, to students from Latin America, will remain. You know, they want a safe environment. They want a great education. They want a, an experience. They want the outdoors. They want, you know, the culture that Australia offers Um, you know, the closeness to Asia, there's, there's a, whole ba you know, a whole range of factors that are going to continue to be attractive to students, but there's no doubt that, you know, it'll take a little while for the numbers to come back. So out of all those things, I, th I think the biggest impact, in fact, has been on the student uh, market of students going to Australia. And Australia and Brazil are two economic powerhouses in the Southern Hemisphere, and Brazil is Australia's largest commercial partner in Latin America. What are the key drivers behind Brazil's economy and what role does Australia have in this? Yeah, thanks, Dominic. So the first thing to remember, I guess, about Brazil, which is not necessarily widely known, it's such a big market. I mean, there's, depending on how you measure it, and this changes with uh, definitions and with exchange rates, but Brazil has something like 150 million people in the middle class. So it has a very big domestic services market. That's why... That's why it's a big economy in and of itself. Um, but in terms of other industries and other sectors, you know, Brazil has historically been a big manufacturer. Brazil manufactures cars. It's a, it's a major car manufacturer. Um, it's a major aerospace manufacturer. Embraer is, is the fourth biggest uh, commercial aircraft manufacturer in the world. It's got a very, very big resources sector, so the oil and gas sector is big. Brazil is a very, very big producer of iron ore, the second only to Australia globally, um, and it's also a big producer of renewable energy. Um, but probably the, the biggest, um, biggest industry of all, and particularly one that's relevant to Australia, as we'll talk about more in a minute, is agribusiness. Agribusiness in Brazil represents about 23% of the GDP of the country. Now, when you compare that to Australia, for example, where agribusiness is also a very big industry, in Australia, it represents only about 3% of our GDP. So Brazil is a, is a very big producer of, of, of beef, pork, chicken, soya beans, um, corn, cotton, orange juice, and all those commodities. It's generally the first or second biggest in the world in terms of its production and or exports. And to give you a bit more context, you know, a, a middle-sized state in Brazil to take uh, Mato Grosso do Sul, In, in the centre west of Brazil, that, that middle-sized state has more cattle than all of Australia. 
So it just gives you a sense of the importance of the agribusiness industry. So that's obviously one that, you know, that we've engaged with very strongly. Um, to talk about Australia's role in, you know, the, 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 the Brazilian economy, I, I would say it's obviously modest because Brazil is such a big economy and has such big links with the world that Australia is not the most important partner. So it's a modest engagement. But I think it's important because apart from the, the trade and investment links, um, we, we have a presence, we have a very good presence of Australian major corporations across a variety of sectors here. Um, we have companies such as Macquarie, um, Karoon, uh, Goodman, Wally, Amcor, Seek, Cotton On, so across a variety of sectors. And not only are those companies important in terms of the impact they have in their specific sector in Brazil, they, um, you know, they're a reference in many ways for corporations, foreign corporations acting in Brazil. Brazilian, um, uh, the Brazilian corporate sector and, and in many cases the, um, the retail commercial sector, they know about these companies and they often references in their sector. So, you know, to use Macquarie as an example, the Brazilians know that Brazil, uh, Macquarie is, is a reference company in terms of its infrastructure development globally. And so they want to be engaged with companies like that because they see them as best in class. And so I think that that, that is an important part of the relationship. It's a part that the Australian government likes to encourage the you know, the um, approximation, let's say, of, of uh, Australian corporations with their Brazilian counterparts and with Brazilian government to show that we have companies here that are doing world-class manufacturing, world-class mining, world-class INT, world-class logistics, and to be able to bring them together um, is, is a really important part of my role. Um, so agriculture is an area of mutual interest for both Argentina and Brazil, and also for Australia. What strategies are being used to strengthen the bilateral relations between the respective countries in the agribusiness sector? More generally, what is the role of sustainable agricultural practices in those strategies, and what efforts are both the public and private sector making towards meeting sustainability in pr production patterns? It's a, it's a good question, Ludmilla, and perhaps I'll answer the second part first about sustainability. Um, it, well, it's, it'll be no surprise for you to hear that sustainability, or as they call it, ESG more generally, is, is a big issue for both Brazil and Argentina. Um, it's, it's a big issue for every country, or it should be, um, and all major, um, all major companies in, in Brazil and Argentina almost certainly have ESG policies. Um, you know, basically, you, it's very difficult to sell into the domestic markets in these countries um, or to global markets these days without some fairly good bona fides with respect to your ESG policy. So that, that's a good thing. And it's not only that, it's not only that private companies recognise that, it's recognised at government level as well in both countries. I mean, we can, you know, we can, we can analyse and we can argue about the degree to which sustainability has been implemented across various sectors in both of these countries. And maybe it's, maybe there's some imbalances, maybe it's better in other areas than some. Um, you know, there's, there's obviously a big debate about that in agriculture uh, in both countries, perhaps even more so in Brazil. Um, but the important thing is, is that there, this is something that's not going to be turned back. There's a recognition at the government and the corporate level that ESG is important. It's important for the environment. It's important for corporations' profits is important to be able to do business around the world. So, you know, we, we certainly welcome that and, and the Australian government engages on those sorts of issues very frequently in both countries. Um, and in terms of um, the, the, big, the, the other picture about how we engage with um, uh, the government here to, you know, to, let's say, to advance Australia's interests, you know, we, we don't have free trade agreements with Brazil and Argentina, as you know, um, but, we do, but we do engage um, continually with government on um, issues that are important to Australian companies, um, particularly in agribusiness. So um, one of the ways that we do that is we look at, we look at the opportunities for the sale of produce um, into Argentina and Brazil. 
and we talked to the we talked to the Argentine and the Brazilian government about if we don't have access for those products, whether that's something that we could um, we could get. Um, and it works both ways, of course. So the governments here are interested in their access to products in Australia as well. So it's a it's a balanced discussion. Um, but you know that that's something important that government can do because trade cannot happen without access to the right markets. It, it means that there's um, there's you know, photosanitary protocols that need to be put in place and agreed between the countries. Um, a, a range of other non-tariff barriers may have to be addressed. And so, you know, not only would, do we do that, but we, we also talk to government and corporations about sharing ideas and technologies that could benefit both countries in agriculture and other sectors. And Australia, the good thing about that discussion is Australia is very well regarded in Australia, in Argentina and Brazil. So, you know, we, we do get a seat at the table with these discussions. Uh, governments and private corporations are interested in hearing what Australia is doing, interested in the, the view of the Australian government. So I think that, you know, although, you know, going back to the previous question, we have a, we have a modest presence in terms of, you know, what we can do, we are very well regarded. And, you know, to use an old expression, I think we, we do punch above our weight in terms of the engagement that the Australian government has in Argentina and Brazil in promoting Australia's interests, particularly in the agricultural sector. Thanks, Greg. Can you tell us a bit more about the work that Australia has been doing to promote Brazilian and Argentine investment in Australia and what has been achieved there? Yeah, this is, um, I'm very happy to talk about this aspect of our work, Dominic, because it's, um, it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with, very proud of the work that our, that our teams here have done. Um, you know, we, we recognised about four or five years ago that, um, that there was an opportunity to talk to, to big corporations in Argentina and Brazil about investing in Australia. It's not a, it's not a part of the work that, that we had traditionally done. Um, that, you know, investment into Australia has, has normally come or very traditionally come from Europe and the Americas, and, and more recently, very strongly, of course, from Asia. Um, there has been some um, investment in Australia in the past, um, notably from Brazil. So companies such as JBS, as you would know, have invested heavily in the meat production sector in Australia. Um, a company called Natura invested in Australia by buying ESOP a number of years ago. Um, there's a company called Marco Polo that has invested in the bus production industry in Australia. So there's been some investment, but not, not a great deal, you might say, not as much as what there is from Australia into Brazil and into Argentina. Um, and, and what had happened, you know, going back maybe 10 years, is that the big corporations in Argentina and Brazil had become increasingly uh, internationalised. They were looking outside of their own countries. They become more capable. They become bigger. They become more aware of opportunities in global markets. So a number of these companies expanded to neighbouring countries in Latin America. Uh, then they often went to the United States and Canada, and some of them went to Europe, even to other places. Um, but not many of them had looked at Australia or the Asia Pacific. So we thought it was a great opportunity to talk to them. And the, the natural area to begin that conversation was around agribusiness. That was a very common sector for us. Um, and so... In the past couple of years, we have, we have talked to a number of the big agribusiness companies in both countries, and I'm very pleased to say, to say that, you know, we've helped those companies to invest in Australia. Um, there's been a big family group from Argentina that has bought a number of properties in the Northern Territory and with the idea of developing agriculture in the Northern Territory, and they have started to grow cotton, they've trialled cotton successfully. So that's a very important step towards the development of Northern Australia in, in a small way, which has been a, a goal of, you know, many, many um, Australian governments over the years and state and territory governments. And, and still, generally speaking, I think it's fair to say that we, we, we would like to see the development of Northern Australia. Um, you might have seen in the press just recently that the, the third biggest uh, meat processor in Brazil, a company called Minerva, has made an investment in Western Australia into sheep meat processing. And that'll create about 150 jobs to begin with, and and it's an investment of about 40 million dollars. So that's tremendous as well. So there are things that are happening. Um, more of those will happen 
and you know we've been really pleased to be involved with those. Um, but it's not only it's not only in the agribusiness sector that we see opportunity. Uh, more broadly, um, we see opportunity in in IT and aerospace, manufacturing, waste management, pulp and paper. There are big corporations in both countries that have the capability and already are investing in other countries. And we want to make sure that they consider Australia as a potential place to invest for all the benefits that that can bring, particularly for their engagement with Asia, which everyone, everyone in this part of the world recognises that Asia is an important destination. Everyone that's investing and exporting abroad and Australia has a lot to offer and a lot to teach them with respect to their engagement with Asia. So that's been a very, very positive conversation. And I, I, I truly believe that, you know, years after I've left here, that we will see uh, much more investment from Brazil and Argentina and perhaps, perhaps Chile, perhaps Mexico, other countries in Latin America into Australia in coming years. And, and that will be a very, very significant um, enabler of the growth of the bilateral relationship. Um, so I think it's very important and it's a very exciting part of the work we do. Thank you, Greg. And now to wrap up and in connection to the previous question, uh, what is the future of the Brazil-Australia relationship? I think it's uh, very bright, Ludmilla, and I think, I think, in fact, my comments are probably um, in, in a, perhaps in a, in a lesser way with respect to the numbers, but they'll also apply to Argentina um, in that I think that there's a, I think there's a very important um, uh, commonality across the cultures. That's one important thing. Um, Australians, Brazilian, Argentinians are not that dissimilar in terms of our culture. Um, they're actually about 50,000 Brazilians living in Australia. I don't know the number for Argentina. I know it's less than that, but it's a pretty significant cohort of people that have migrated there. And when you add that to the, the student numbers from across Latin America, um, you know, there's been a, a very big growth in engagement at the people-to-people -people level over the last 20 years. Um, and as I said, you know, we, we tend to think alike. We have, um, you know, we have similar uh, cultures in terms of, um, you know, the engagement on sporting levels in terms of our like of the outdoors. Um, and, you know, when I was living in Thailand, that, that's a country that in many ways has a, and other countries in Asia, in many ways have a much closer relationship with Australia from a, a, a distance, of course, and a, and a, and a commercial relationship. But you'd have to say that the, the cultural links between a lot of countries in Asia and Australia are not as close, from my perspective, as what they are between Latin America and Australia. So, you know, there, there's a reason to think that, that, that those links can become stronger. And there's a tremendous amount of goodwill towards Australia from countries in Latin America. You know, Argentines, Brazilians have a, have a very, very favourable view of Australia and Australians. And and that is not to be underestimated in terms of the, you know, the ability to grow the relationship because we need that goodwill every day to talk to people, to engage them, to interest them in Australia. At, at the political level, there's, you know, leaders come and go and, you know, there's, there's always political challenges. You know, in many ways there's political challenges today in Brazil and Argentina, as, as we know. Um, but as I said, the leaders come and go. And the, the cooperation that exists, you know, goes beyond the current leadership, um, you know, today, tomorrow, 10 years' time. We have, we have strong links into institutions across, a, across a, a, a wide range of international fora that we engage on. So I don't think that the political relationship, even when that's um, unstable, is going to affect the ability of the relationship to grow. And, of course, what we've talked about for the last 20 minutes or so is is the economic relationship. That's where there's a great opportunity for that relationship to grow as well. Um, you know, it's, it's, often, it's often said or often thought that, you know, we are competitors um, um, and, and so why is there an opportunity for us to have a strong relationship from a commercial sense? Um, and that, that's partly true. I mean, as I said, you know, Brazil is a very big iron ore producer, for example. We do compete on global markets for iron ore. To some extent, we compete um, on beef. Um, Australia competes on beef with Argentina, Brazil, and other countries in Latin America on global markets, but it's mostly actually for different markets. It's mostly different sectors and different markets. So 
And, and not only that, the fact that we are, you know, that we are engaged in, you know, major global industries which are similar creates a whole range of reasons for us to be talking to each other because of cooperation, um, because of technology interchange, because of the operation, uh, the, the opportunity that exists for companies within those sectors to export and invest in both countries to be a part of our own industries and our own domestic markets is strong. So for all those reasons, you know, I, I think that the, the outlook for the relationship is very, very strong. Um, yeah, it's going to have its ups and downs. It will probably never be as big as, it, as Australia's relationships with countries that are closer to home, and I think we recognise that. Um, but I think it can grow, and um, I think it's a, it's a relationship worth pursuing. It's um, got tremendous potential, and um, as I said in the beginning, it's, it's such a privilege to be part of a, a, a team of people that has, um, has a role to play in developing that relationship. So very happy to be here and very happy to have this chance to talk about these kind of issues with, with both of you. Well, thank you, Greg, for joining us today to discuss the role of business and trade in the Brazil-Australia relationship and also the opportunities in collaboration with Australia and Argentina. It's been really insightful to hear from someone with your experience and expertise and learn more about um, the connections across the two continents. So from both our audience and the whole team at the Australia Latin Emerging Leaders Dialogue, thank you. And sorry, Dominic, just one other last comment, if I can. Um, to anyone that anyone that, that watches this um, this presentation, um, I'd be very happy for you to to reach out and connect with me on LinkedIn if you'd like. I'm very happy to talk about any of these issues we've discussed, and and um, it's it, it's a real pleasure to talk with with people that I haven't met and those I have about Latin America. So please, if you if you'd like to reach out, I'm very happy for you to do so. Thank you very much, Greg. Thank you. Thank you.